Welcome to another Being Outdoor Words of Matthias. This time we're going to take a look into 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 is an interesting story. If you start reading in verse um, 17, it, it's the story of, of, of Elijah in the Bible and when Elijah called down fire from heaven. And most of us are probably familiar with most of that story. I just want to, I'm going to read through it and then make a few points. In verse 17, it says, And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered and said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandment of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. And and so if you start reading verse 19, And now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets Baal 450. That's going to be important for us. And the prophets of the gross 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. I'm going to scroll way down. And so they've done that. Elijah makes the, makes the um, challenge to them. And Elijah says, um, here's what we'll do. Everybody choose your own sacrifice. And then once you choose that sacrifice, then what we'll do is you can uh, call on your God and we'll see who, if he'll send down fire from heaven to ignite your fire, to, to set your sacrifice on fire. And then when you guys are done, then I will call on my God and we'll see if he will light it. Okay? And in verse, two, and I'm skipping down to 26, 1 Kings chapter 18. And they took the bullet which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal. From morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any answered. And they leaped upon the altar. And it came to pass that Elijah mocked them. And he said, Cry aloud, for he's a God. Either he's talking or is he pursuing, is, or he's in journey. Maybe he's sleeping and needs to be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, there was neither a voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. Verse 30, And Elijah said to all the people, Come near me. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And the Bible talks about how Elijah took those twelve stones, and how he built the altar up, fixed the sacrifice. Then he made a trench around it. He called guys in, and he said, um, Take... Fill these barrels up and pour barrels of water on the sacrifice and wet the sacrifice. And it, they've done that a number of times. And, and the Bible says um, they did it a third time. And the water ran about the altar and filled the trench around also with water. And it came to pass the evening of the, of the offering, the Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God. And Israel, now I am thy servant, and all I have done these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord thy God, that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wooden stones, and the dust, and licked up the water, and was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. That's verse 40. A couple, three things mainly I want to point out to you about that whole story. Okay, let's go back to the very beginning. The Bible talks about, in verse 18, how Elijah went to go see Ahab. And when, and when Ahab saw Elijah coming, he said, You're the man that's troubled Israel. And, and Elijah, standing up for what's right and just telling it like it was. And you got to always respect somebody like that. They'll just tell it like it is. Whether you want to hear it or not, if it is the truth and the truth of God's word, sometimes you got to be a man to take. And Elijah looked at him and he said, I haven't troubled Israel. You have. Because y'all have went by the wayside and, and worshipped these false gods. And he mentioned about the 450 prophets. Remember I was talking about how that would be important for us. How they eat at Jezebel's table. And they've led the people astray. That's why you hadn't had no rain, and that's what the issues have been. You know, so many times in life, this is the first point, is, is that we won't take responsibility for our actions. You know, Elijah said and looked at Ahab and said, I'm not the problem, you're the problem. And, and it wasn't a he said, she said thing. It was, you're the problem according to God's word. So many times in life, I'll, I know people who will do certain things. And when they fail to do those things, you know what? They'll tend to start to blame other people. 
You know, I have that sometimes happen at school. Uh, somebody who don't make the grade they want, but, but they're not willing to study. You have people who um, want things but are not willing to work for them. Um, that happens in society all the time. People commit crimes, but yet once they commit the crime and are called for that crime, they don't want to accept the responsibility of the punishment for that crime. You know, I always use this statement that if you're man enough to do something, then you're man enough to take the consequence. And, and a lot of times people do this, I find that in, in business, where people will order something, use it, sometimes destroy it, and then want to return it and want me to take it back. It's like, well, if you purchase that and you use that and then it's no longer usable, how can I take it back? Um, I can't take it back. And, and people will get upset at me, and it's like, well, you, if you're the one that destroyed it, but it's hard for people to understand because no one wants to take responsibility. And so I think that's a very important thing that a lot of people take for granted in today's world is taking responsibility for their own actions. Say thing I want to point out, too, is those people made the sacrifice. And when they made that sacrifice, um, it was to the false god. They called on their false god, never could get an answer. And then when they couldn't get an answer anymore, the Bible says they began to, to cut themselves and leap on the altar. And I was thinking about how Elijah, the Bible says, when it was his turn, he went the sacrifice and basically just got on his knees and said, God, I've done this according to your word. I've tried to live for you is what he's saying. I've done according to what, what you want me to do. And Lord, if you will, just send fire down. And the Bible says God set fire down. You know why he done that? Because he was doing it according to God's word. He was doing what God wanted him to do. He was doing what the Bible, in, or in today's world, I'm going to translate today's word, what the Bible instructed him to do. In those days, God had spoke to him and told him what to do, and he done those things. Those false prophets did not have God on them. They were serving Baal, the false God, and they were serving that false God, and they were doing everything they could but serving the true God and trying to go their own way to get the fire to come down. Now, you can liken that to salvation. So many times today, people will have their own way for salvation. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When Jesus says, I am the way, he is meaning I am the only way, not a way, not, well, we can think about it or we can come up with an alternative, maybe something works better. No. I am the way. Jesus is the only way to heaven. But so many times in today's world, we'll do, a lot of people will try to do, and I used to be like this before I got saved when I was 13 years old, is that I would, my own way to be saved, in that my parents are pretty good. My dad's a, a children's pastor. My mother's a Sunday school teacher, and they've always been good people. You know, I'm not a bad kid. But you know what? Going to church and being a good kid never was going to save me. Never was. And I was a sinner just like everybody else was. Now, I may not have done some of the things that other people have done. I may not have murdered someone or something that someone in prison may have done. But you know what? I'm still going to the same hell that someone that doesn't accept Christ is going to go to. And so, not to that point where I realized I need to be saved and come God's way and tell God I'm a sinner and I need to be saved, could I ever be saved? And so that's a very important thing that we have to realize is in order to be saved, we have to come God's way. Now, we can try to go around just like those, those people did, trying to do all this crazy stuff to get the fire to come down. It wasn't God's way. It wasn't God's word, but it was their way. That's never going to work. And then the last point I want to mention to you that I think is very important is about the, at the end in verse 40, it says that when the fire came down, they said, it is the Lord, it is the Lord. And the people recognized that it was God the one true God that sent that fire down. And it was like, da -da, okay, this is it. This is what we should do. Then Elijah said, go after them. And it said they caught the priest of those, the prophets of Baal. And he took them down to that place. And the Bible says he slew them. That means he killed them. Now, in earlier times, in the early part of the Bible, it mentions, and I said, make note of it, 450 of them. There was 450 prophets, and Elijah went down there and killed them. That's very significant. Because not only was he a prophet, and he was a preacher, and he was doing what God wanted him to do, he killed those 450. And he killed those 450. And let's just use a little reason and logic. If he, was to, if he was at the word of the Lord, I'm going to rebuild the altar. At the word of the Lord, I'm going to 
build the sacrifice. At the word of the Lord, I've done everything you've asked me to do. And God sends fire down from heaven. Wouldn't it reason that if a man is that in tune with God's word, that he's going to do what God wants him to do, that God told him to kill them prophets? He didn't just, this ain't a guy that just gets a whim, goes, starts slinging eggs and go, well, we, we, fire came down. Why don't we just go ahead and kill them prophets too? No, God told him to kill them prophets. And I've often thought, man, he killed 450 people. That's amazing. Now, he done that with God's power. But the, what I want to focus in on is why did he kill them? And what I believe and what logic and reason will tell you and, 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 is that the Bible says that those 450 prophets led all them people astray. And when God showed himself and said, I am the one true God, and I'm demonstrating that through my power, through this fire that I'm sending down, those bad influences, I won't go on. Those bad influences are going to tarnish my reputation. Those bad influences are going to lead these people astray. I want them gone. And so, and so Elijah done that. And so many times in life, and I've seen this in my own life, I've had to do this personally, is that we need to remove the things that will tarnish our testimony, those things that will can ruin us, influences. If you're a married person, sometimes it's keeping your distance from the opposite sex. Sometimes it may be pornography for some people. No matter what that may be, we have to... And those influences have to be removed. I always use this example, and I think it, it really demonstrates it. If you've ever seen the movie Fireproof, and that guy had a problem with his computer, <clears throat> not a problem with it functioning, but the problem with what he was viewing on this computer, and finally he just said, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you. And he took that computer outside, and he took a sledgehammer and destroyed it. And when he'd done that, he got the victory in his life. I don't know if it's music, I don't know if it's internet, I don't know if it's TV, I don't know what it may be that is causing a problem in your life, but there's something, and it's in everybody's life, that sin which so easily beset us that sometimes we need to cut the strings to. Sometimes it's a friend. Sometimes it's a physical living influence. In my life, I have seen how friends have led me down wrong paths. I was still responsible for my own actions. It was nobody's fault but my own. But the wrong influences were not good for me. And, and I had to separate myself from them. Not a holier than thou, or I'm better than you and you're down here. None of that. Just, I need some separation. And we as Christians had to be careful about those influences. Just like those Baal prophets led them astray, every one of us can be led astray. The Bible talks about all we like sheep are led astray. In, in Psalm chapter 23. And you know what? We have to be careful and guard that. But think about those three things. Do we take responsibility for our actions? Have we come God's way to be saved? And last and not, not least, is there some kind of distraction or something that needs to be cut off from us? This has been a Words of Matthias. If you have any questions about what you've seen or heard, like to contact us. You can give us a call at 336-564-2400. You can email us at eric at beingoutdoors.com. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back next time with another Words of Matthias devotional series.